This video is going to go over gene flow and how it could result in evolution. And what gene flow is, is when one population influences the allelic frequency of a different population. So let's take the simple example of two different populations of cows on each side of this river. So the cows can't cross the river and they can't mate with each other, meaning they're totally different populations. So let's start off by measuring the allele frequency of the dominant allele for each of these populations. So for this first population, we have seven dominant alleles out of 12 alleles total, which means we have an allelic frequency of 0.58. In the second population, we have three dominant alleles out of 12 alleles total, resulting in an allelic frequency of 0.25. Let's say one day a tree falls and creates a bridge over this river, allowing the cows to move back and forth between the populations. And we end up with this migration event where two cows from the first population migrate to the second population and two cows from the second population migrate to the first. And after that migration event, let's take a look at the new allele frequencies. So for this, after the first migration, we have a dominant allele frequency of 4 over 12 or 0.33 in the first population. While in the second one, we have uh, six dominant alleles out of 12, making 0.5 for their allele frequency. Okay, so let's say another migration event happens where two more cows migrate between the two populations. Now looking at the new allele frequencies after the second migration, we have six alleles out of 12 on the first population, so 0.5, and then we have four alleles out of 12 on the second population, or 0.33. And you might notice that these numbers are kind of dancing around or oscillating around a certain number. So if we kept on doing this, we would see this oscillation back and forth. So the question is, is, can we predict what that number is? And yes, we can. So if they were allowed to migrate indefinitely, if these cows are allowed to freely go back and forth as many times as they want, it's almost like they don't have two different populations anymore. It's one giant population. So pretending this is a one giant population, now let's see what the dominant allele frequency is. Since there's 10 dominant alleles out of 24 alleles total, means that we end up with a dominant allelic frequency of 0.417. So on each side of the population, you're going to see this oscillation back and forth as migration occurs around this number. Now we have a name for this number. We call it our equilibrium value. And it represents the allele frequency each of these populations will eventually reach if they're allowed to migrate indefinitely. All right, but is there an easier way to figure out the equilibrium value instead of just counting alleles? And there is. So whenever there is an even number of individuals in both populations and we have an even migration event, so in this case we had two cows move one direction, two cows move the other direction, then we can use the average of the two allelic frequencies to figure out what the equilibrium value is. So here P would be 0.58 plus 0.25 divided by 2 and we end up with the same answer. So whenever we have equal populations with equal migration, then we can just take the average of the two allelic frequencies to figure out what the equilibrium value is. Okay, so let's see what happens when we don't have even numbers of cows in each population. So here we're going to have a small population, a large population, and here we're only going to have one cow migrate at a time between the two populations. So first, let's figure out what the allele frequencies are before any migration occurs. So on the left side, we have two alleles out of six, so we have an allele frequency out of, of 0.33. And on the right side, we have nine out of 12 alleles that are dominant, so we have our allele frequency of 0.75. And we can figure out our equilibrium value. However, since these populations are not even, means we can't just simply take the average of the two allelic frequencies. We actually have to count the number of alleles, but there's 11 alleles out of 18 total, so our equilibrium value is going to be 0.611. Okay, and then we have a migration event occur where one cow goes to the right population and one cow goes to the left population. And looking at the allele frequencies again, for the left side we get 0.67 this time, while on the right side we end up with an allele frequency of 0.58. And looking at the difference between the two of before and after, the smaller population you see a change of 0.34 while in the larger population you see a change of 0.17. Alright, let's say another migration event occurs. 
So again, our allele frequency for the left population is going to be 0.5. And on the right population, our allele frequency is going to be 0.67. And again, let's look at the difference between the two. So we see a change of 0.17 in the left population while we see a change of, while we see a difference of 0 0.09 in the right population. So what you notice here is that the bigger population has a greater influence on the smaller population than does the smaller population to the larger population. So just to summarize everything that we saw in this video, so gene flow is when one population influences the allele frequency of another population. We saw that they will eventually reach some sort of equilibrium value, and we can calculate this by taking the average of the two allele frequencies of population if the two populations have equal sizes. How quickly these populations are going to reach equilibrium is dependent on how many migration events there are and the size of the migration event. And we see that larger populations influence smaller populations more.